Hi friends today I'll be talking about uh, what are the red flag signs or the signs that really require the patients to come and see pediatric pulmonologist so before starting the main topic I'll be giving a couple of case scenarios which we have dealt in in this uh, in this current season and uh, how we have managed them and what are the signs that as pediatricians or as parents people would want to listen or see or uh, consult the pediatricians and then come to us and take it forward in terms of the treatments so the first case that i'm going to talk to you is about a 2 month old infant presented to us with complaints of cough cold and persistent inspiratory stridor since birth and this child was uh, i remember this child very vividly because the stridor had worsened since last one month with difficulty in feeding and choking during feeds and the most striking feature of this particular child was the birth weight of the child was 3.6 kilos but at the end of 2 months the child was only 3.5 kilos a matter of fact it had lost another 100 grams and this particular child also had visited a couple of pediatricians and a few ENT specialists and was reassured that the child is going to get better as the age progresses when i saw this child in the in the clinic we could see that child was struggling to uh, struggling to breathe had significant amount of inspiratory stridor and the sound goes like this <gasps> so this was quite a significant sound for me and child continued to have significant amount of suprasternal substernal and subcostal retractions and there were intermittent pauses in the breathing amounting to something called as obstruction so this particular child when we looked at it all the clinical features as well as the signs and symptoms was suggestive of something called as laryngomalacia but what was striking was this child was having failure to thrive so this would be something that we would definitely think about referring to a pediatric pulmonologist for further uh, in the interventions like a bronchoscopy a lower airway endoscopy so that we can at least deduce what is the cause and take it forward and uh, coming on to the second case scenario this particular child was a 6 month old infant presented to us with recurrent uh, wheeze uh, recurrent as well as persistent wheezing recurrent because child had two three episodes of wheezing bouts which required hospitalization as well as persistent because in between episodes also child would have a little bit of huffing and puffing and uh, child has had three admissions in the past and continued to have like i said huffing and puffing in between the episodes and when i looked at this child in the clinic child was quite happy and child was playful but child had that mild respiratory distress child was breathing slightly faster and when i put my stethoscope on the child's chest child had significant amount of wheeze but the quality of sound was kind of slightly different so rather than being polyphonic child continued to have only one particular type of sound called as monophonic sound so we call this as mono phonic wheeze so when we listen to a chest and we listen to the same quality sound <laughs> we call it as monophonic sound and when you hear a monophonic sound we always suspect something beyond just simple wheezing or asthma and i would present a few red flag signs so that people can think about it and start looking into it a bit more deeper and refer the cases as and when required so in units and infants what are the red flag signs that i would pr- probably would want a pediatric pulmonologist to see so first is definitely a persistent respiratory distress no child will have persistent respiratory distress from birth second will be failure to thrive not gaining weight not at all doing well definitely something that would definitely want us to see apart from that the any abnormal sound it can be inspiratory or expiratory so inspiratory sound which i already showed you <gasps> expiratory sound can be something with persistent so if the child runs around and starts having this particular sound child gets excited seeing the parents has this particular expiratory sound definitely needs a referral apart from that any child presents with persistent pneumonias any child who has persistent lung shadows apart from that uh, child has recurrent multi system infections so any child comes with recurrent pneumonias and rear recurrent ear infections definitely needs to be seen by a pediatric pulmonologist as well as a immunologist to deduce what is a re- exact cause apart from that we have significant uh, that is persistent we is not responding to usual medications persistent cough difficulty in feeding and swallowing recurrent or persistent vomiting and retching coughing while feeding so going into toddler age group 
toddler age group again a very important age group where we see lot of under 5 visas we see lot of viral induced visas recurrent persistent dry cough recurrent wet cough apart from that any child with persistent runny itchy nose definitely has to be persistent means always something that is beyond 21 days persistent pneumonia persistent lung shadows to look for any congenital causes which has been missed in the neonatal as well as infantile period and the most important thing in the toddler age group is persistent snoring persistent open mouth breathing behavioral issues people say oh my child is hyperactive my child is attention deficit that is quite common in this age group apparently that is not something very common if your child has persistent snoring persistent mouth breathing as well as their hyperactivity is increasing definitely needs to come and see a pediatric pulmonologist and apart from this failure to thrive then going on to the next age group which is the school going age group again school going age group we all uh, are going to see the same clinical conditions that is persistent and wheezing persistent dry cough persistent wet cough but this particular age group can also have a certain amount of hemoptysis and most importantly again uh, a history about snoring open mouth breathing failure to thrive always has to be asked in these particular group of children and coming to the last group of uh, children that is adolescents adolescents are a separate group of kids where we have to look into lot of things and in these kids also because they are so used to wheezing and living with wheezing again they are uh, used to it and they just continue doing their uh, job without even realizing they have significant restriction of their activity any adolescent presents with persistent wheeze persistent dry cough persistent runny itchy blocked nose as well as persistent pneumonias recurrent pneumonias this is an age group which is prone to develop lot of autoimmune diseases so the presenting with persistent chest pain could be because of pleuritis hemoptysis persistent lung shadows definitely have to be referred to us so at the end what i want to tell all our audience is that any child who is beyond what we usually see that is a child who is healthy who is growing well everything as a normal child doesn't need a referral but any child that is beyond normal that is persistent wheeze persistent cough persistent wet cough or snoring which is beyond what we can usually see definitely needs a referral to us thank you